Tesla just placed a huge order through CATL for an insane amount of batteries that gives us an indication of what kind of production capacity we should expect in 2022. So all the batteries they're ordering are lithium iron phosphate, which we've talked a lot about on this channel, but just in case you're not aware, these batteries are capable of being charged to 100% every single day. They're less energy dense, but they require no cobalt, which is helpful for making them cheaper and also allows for more ethical mining practices. And they're safer because it's much, much harder for them to catch on fire. And on top of that, because their cathode is based on iron and there's lots of that in the world, the production of LFP batteries should be able to scale much, much faster than other chemistries out there that are requiring more nickel. That's what you see in long range Teslas, but the order Tesla put in from CATL is approximately 45 gigawatt hours, which given most of these batteries are likely destined to go into standard range Teslas, which Model 3 has around a 55 kilowatt hour battery, Model Y standard range has a 60 kilowatt hour battery. That would equate to around 800,000 standard range Teslas, which keep in mind, the current production capacity of Giga Shanghai in total for long range performance and standard range has just recently exceeded like 500,000. I know that in the shareholder deck, it still just says over 450,000, but they did also mention recently that now Giga Shanghai is out producing Fremont, which Fremont's been around 500,000, 550,000 for a while. So I think it's very likely to say that, okay, production capacity might expand at Giga Shanghai next year. That's to be assumed. But also what's far more likely is Tesla is going to designate more LFP batteries towards their energy business. Right now, there is a huge backlog of people who are wanting Tesla power walls and several years back ordered for different utility companies hoping to order mega packs, which basically is a larger form of power wall that's helpful for stabilizing different grids when the power is unreliable and needs to shut down for a few hours every now and again, you can fall back on a giant stationary battery storage project, which seems to make a lot of financial sense for lots of different cities and countries around the world. But the biggest problem is that again, Tesla cannot build them fast enough. And the reason I think everyone should be excited about this order and not just people who are hoping for standard range Teslas like myself, or just people who are excited for power walls or mega pack to be deployed in more massive scale is that essentially the more LFP batteries Tesla can use for energy storage, that means more batteries can be freed up for long range Teslas because for the longest time, Tesla has been using more traditional cylindrical cells like the 1865 batteries and the 2170 batteries, which could be going into long range Model 3s, long range Model Ys, and of course the Model S and X vehicles, which are already back ordered pretty substantially. So as soon as LFP starts taking over for energy storage, which makes a ton of sense because LFP batteries are heavier and they're less energy dense, which doesn't matter so much when you're just strapping a battery to someone's garage wall or you're just making a parking lot full of batteries like mega pack weight doesn't matter too much there and having a high cycle life doesn't matter too much there as long as the batteries are cheap that's what matters so that does mean tesla should be able to scale up production for not just their standard range teslas next year but thanks to the freed up capacity of the 2170 cells also being able to produce more long range model 3s long range model y's and of course hopefully more s and x vehicles which should provide a thick amount of profit so a lot of people were just glossing over this story but i think it means big things for the future because I'm sure long term Tesla of course wants to be producing their own batteries in house. They're prototyping it right now with the 4680s at Cato Road and they're building up their own battery production facilities at Giga Texas and Giga Berlin which Tesla believes they'll be online producing their own local batteries by sometime next year. Hopefully in the first half if all things go according to schedule but most likely all of those 4680 batteries Tesla is working on is going to be reserved for longer range Teslas and of course things like the Cybertruck, where you have a more mass sensitive design where it needs fairly low weight with very high energy density and kind of the same thing with the Tesla Semi, which apparently also is going to need the 4680s because you want to make sure you can have an adequate payload with still a long range. So I'm super duper grateful Tesla is being able to secure these massive orders from CATL. I saw some people trying to spin this as a bad thing, like so much for vertical integration. I thought Tesla wanted to build all of its batteries in house. No, they've literally never said that. They've always said, we're going to start building our own batteries in-house because we need as many batteries as possible. If you want to start building and delivering 20 million vehicles per year, plus be rapidly expanding Powerwall and Mega Pack, you're going to need two to three terawatt hours of battery production, which means Tesla is going to buy as many batteries as they can from Panasonic, from LG Chem, and yes, CATL, and hopefully they can find some usefulness for the lithium iron phosphate batteries in as many different vehicles as possible, because then those 4680 batteries,
batteries that are more useful and more required for vehicles like the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi don't have anywhere else to go. So basically Tesla will take batteries from anyone that can provide them, assuming they're of course using minerals that were ethically mined, they're affordable and they have a high cycle life. They have certain standards of course they need to reach, but Tesla is going to build as many batteries as they can in house. But simultaneously, yes, they are going to be buying as many batteries from suppliers as possible because if your mission is to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy, you can't be too picky about whose batteries you're buying or what type of batteries you're buying. So yeah, that's going to involve high nickel content batteries, nickel and manganese combination batteries, and lithium iron phosphate batteries, which I think could probably even make their way into higher range vehicles. Like right now, LFP batteries are only being used in the standard range Model 3 and Y, but if the energy density improves at all, you know, the long range Model 3 is already at over 350 miles. If Tesla could somehow find a way to increase the battery pack inside the LFP, LFP Model 3, maybe even start making long-range versions of those, probably only rear-wheel drive though, because they don't have room for the dual motor. Then you could start seeing lithium iron phosphate batteries go over 300 miles on a charge while still being very affordable and Tesla is able to scale them as fast as they can, assuming there's no uh, major car rental companies that try to buy them all out from under us. Hopefully that doesn't happen because that would hurt quite a bit. Okay, please don't unsubscribe. I'll never make puns again. Anyway, feel free to let me know how you guys feel about the 45 gigawatt hour order from CATL, and thank you all once again to our Patreon members for being so generous and supporting me on hopefully buying a standard range Model Y if they end up launching one in the United States, because I appreciate the high cycle life and I appreciate the affordability. Charging up to 100% daily is going to be more than enough for our needs, and I just think LFP is going to cover the basics for most EVs in the future. Anyway, Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.